All right, so I am going to tell you from the comfort of my back porch um, how you can make HEP data input so that you can upload data to the Durham HEP database. And this is going to focus on what I think we should be doing for what I'll call legacy analyses, analyses that have been published for a while um, where we'd like to make the data available for use um, and nobody is going to do it unless you do. So we want to try to minimize the amount of work done. Why should you bother um, making input so you can upload to the HEP database. Um, this is a centrally maintained database used by particle physics and the heavy ion um, experiments at the Large Hadron Collider. This reduces the reliance on websites maintained by the collaborations. And this is important because both Star and Phoenix have had long outages, um, which have meant that those data are not available to people. Um, and then my ultimate goal is implementation of analyses in Rivet. And if the data are available in HEP data, it makes the Rivet analysis a lot easier. Um, so then what can we do? So I'm going to use, I'm going to direct you guys to use a utility written by one of my undergraduate students. Um, and this utility is called YAML Maker. And there are other utilities out there. I've got a link to the big one down there. I'm pointing you to YAML Maker because I think that it is the easiest to use and um, it's very straightforward. All a YAML file is is a formatted text file that includes the data. Um, and so we're just working with different manipulations of text files. Okay, so if you download YAML Maker, um, you just clone it, you compile it, and then you run it. Um, so I have a directory here that I have done that. Um, and the way that you run YAML Maker is pretty simple. You just run the executable. It takes, one it takes two arguments. The first argument is the debug level. If you do zero, then it doesn't um, give very much output. And the second argument is a formatted text file containing all of the data. I've cheated here and I've made sure that this is working in advance so I don't have to go through and edit all of the text files. So if you just run this and it works, you get no output with a debug level of zero, um, but what it does is that it makes a file, um, in this case called fig5.yaml, um, and we're gonna look at that YAML file um, so here, the first part of the YAML file is um, the X data points. And here we've, we're using binning. So this is going to have the low end of the bin and the high end of the bin. Um, and then as you move down the file, um, you see different fields, the name of the, um, of the Y axis, and then the, um, the label for the Y axis and then each of the data points with their uncertainties. And um, then you can have multiple data sets. There's nothing sophisticated about this. Um, it's just a formatted text file. Um, I personally find it easier to make a tab separated text file to start with, which is why Tom's YAML maker um, starts there. So then you have um, in your text file, we're gonna open up one of those right here. So, well, actually we'll use the example I made pretty on the slides. Um, the first part of it is a header, um, the X axis, the number of data sets that you're going to have. Now, HEP data wants you to have data sets that have the same number of data points along each. Each of these text files is going to end up being one data table in the HEP data database. If you are, don't have the exact same number of data points, it's usually going to be best to just make, uh, to make a couple of extra tables instead of to try to get it all into one um, table. Um, and then you want to, I want to highlight a couple points here. Um, you have an option with YAML Maker of whether you want to use just an X point um, or bins, and you want to use bins for rivet implementation. It doesn't so much matter for getting the data up into the database, um, but 
you will appreciate it later if you just go ahead and use bins now. Um, and then you have an option of a statistical and a systematic uncertainty on the x-axis. On the y-axis, you can have an unlimited number of uncertainties and um, they can have any label that you want. Um, so in this particular case, there are three different types of uncertainties. And then after you have this header, this is where you, the, the next thing is just a comma separated, or a tab separated file that has each of the data points. So while YAML maker does not insist that you have the same number of, um, of data points uh, in each data set, it, it, tap data will give you some weird errors if you don't. Um, so then you have the X range, the Y value, um, and then each of the Y uncertainties. And the different data sets are denoted by three asterisks until you get to the end. Okay, so then you wanna run YAML Maker on all of the text files for the data um, and you generate your YAML files. So here in my test directory, um, you can see that I've already done it. Um, and then you need one file which it stitches them all together. And this is the most important file. Um, we don't have an automated way to make this because I have found that it is easier to just do it a little bit manually. Um, so this is the submission.yaml. Um, the first part is the abstract and um, no line breaks. And if you're going to have any errors, it's because the LaTeX is not interpreted properly. Um, because we're mostly dealing with legacy analyses here, I am all in favor of removing the pretty LaTeX formatting if it's causing errors and just going with something that is a workable solution. And then here, I would recommend listing the web page for the collaboration that, tell, that tells you where to get the data. Um, it's a bit redundant and it may not be available in perpetuity, but, for, but it will be available for a while. And then you need a figure delimiter. The, um, the name is the name of the table when you read it in HEP data. Um, a description appears underneath that in HEP data. And then um, these keywords giving the reactions um, and the center of mass energies are also, um, are also important. And then this is the name of the YAML file for that table. So if you go down a submission.yaml, it's going to have all of those, um, it's going to have one of those entries for each table. Um, so then, because I have done this already um, and gotten it working, I already have my YAML files. Um, to test it, you need to um, upload a tar or a zip file. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I like tar better for no particular reason. Um, and I'm gonna tar it all into one file. And then um, what you can do is you can upload it into the Durham database in order to test it. So if we go to um, hepdata.net, you need to make an account if you don't have one already, and most of you won't. Um, and then you need to click here where it says sandbox. So when you click in sandbox, this is a way that you can test your files and make sure that they're working. So here I'm going to run in, I'm going to upload my tarball. Um, and sometimes it takes a little while to process. Um, but this is actually going to format the table the way that we would expect it to. Um, look once it is submitted to have data. And ah, here I've remade a file. So there is currently a minor bug in YAML Maker, which I will ask Tom to fix. Um, hopefully he will. And This needs a new line character. So we're gonna make that um, tarball again. And then we're gonna upload it again. Um, 
So here, I want to point out the errors are not always useful um, out of HEP data, which is part of why I recommend iteratively adding each of the tables. Um, I've run into this error before. It tells you the line number and the column number, but if you don't know what's, what works, it's hard to see what's, um, it's hard to guess what exactly is wrong with that. You can also go to any paper that has their, has its data uploaded in the Durham database and you can download the, um, a zip file with all of its YAML files, which is very useful if you're trying to look at examples. Okay, so this time it worked. And here you can see what it would look like if this um, analysis were actually uploaded to the Durham database. And here you see the abstract. And for each figure, um, these are the titles that we had in the, um, in the submission.yaml. And you can see the x-axis. And if you have a large table, um, you are going to have to scroll all the way down in order to scroll over. Um, but then what's useful about this is that if you're someone trying to use data from another collaboration or you're a theorist, you can download it and you can download it in a number of different formats. Um, all right, so that's all it is. Um, and I would advocate, so a handful of details, um, I would advocate minimizing the time, debugging the format and making it look pretty as long as it is accurate and clear. Um, and I would also be um, very slow and deliberative about um, how you add different tables. Um, these are some screenshots showing where you should look, um, some screenshots of some errors when, when things are not working right. They're not always useful. Um, this is what it should look like. You can flip through and see that everything is getting loaded correctly. And then finally, some tips. Um, this is not the time or place to express your creativity. Just get it working. Um, I would recommend starting with a minimally working example, add data iteratively and test off and using the sandbox. And you should use bins because when it comes to the rivet implementation, it's gonna pay off. Um, I have sample files there, which I will also send out the links to. Um, and the final step is to actually have a collaboration designate a HEP data submitter who has to approve the file. Um, and when it's in the HEP data database, we can use it easier when we go to implement an analysis of it. All right, thank you.